In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this product pack shadow slider inside the Figma that the user really can swap between different flavors of a product by dragging the image to the left or right or using the slider in the bottom of the page. So get sure to watch this video until the end. My name is Kia and here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, you're going to learn how to use the prototyping tool to create the swapping or sliding effect inside your prototype. There are some tricks that I'm going to share with you. But before we continue, I would like to ask you to take your time and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and like this video. This is going to be really valuable for me to continue making more content related to user experience and user interface design. And besides this, I really like to make content related to your problem, issues and ideas. So I'm going to check the comment section after each video. I will pin the ideas in the comment section and then I will work on them for the next video. So get sure to share your opinions, your feedback or the topics that you would like to see in my channel in the comment section. Now without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start by designing the user interface. I have already downloaded the pack shot of the product from the Red Bull official website. Now I'm going to make a new frame. I choose the iPhone 13. Then I copy paste the pack shot that we have into my frame. Then I'm going to add a rectangle behind the pack shot and then change the color to something like a blue. And then I'm going to pick the text tool and write down the name of the product. I play around with the styling of the text and the position and appearance of it. In the next step, I'm going to work on the slider that we have in the bottom of the screen that the user can switch between different flavors of the product by sliding that user interface element. I simply make a circle layer and uh, add the image of the product on top of that layer. I choose the lighter background for that circle to make a contrast with the background. And then I group those elements together and rename the uh, group that we made. And then I'm gonna duplicate that element and then replace the pack shot image with the next product. I also change the background color to something related to the new product. I'm gonna do this process for all the product that I have. When I'm done with this part, I'm gonna select all of them and then group them together. Then I'm gonna select the first one and make the circle around the product image a bit bigger to just distinguish between the active state and the other slider that we have in the screen. And then I'm going to select the whole parent frame and check on the clip content to get sure that the all elements outside the frame are going to be invisible. In the next step, I'm going to duplicate the frame that we designed and then replace the product with the new product. First in the slider, I'm going to select the next product and then increase the size of the circle around it a bit to just indicate that this product is active now. And then I resize the circle behind the previous product to just show now it is inactive. And of course, I change the position of the slider and bring the active product in the center. And then I'm going to change the name of the product and replace the uh, pack shot with the new pack shot and change the background color to something more related to the current product. I'm going to repeat this process until I have different frames for every and each product that we want to have. Now it's time to work on the prototype and create our sliding effect. Now I'm going to select the slider layer in the first frame and then go to the prototyping panel and connect this layer and group to the next frame. I set the trigger of this interaction to undrag and the type of transition to navigate to. Here the important part is to set the transition type or animation type to push and not to auto animation. If we want to create this effect between only two frames, then it's fine that we kind of set the animation type to auto animation as well. But if we want to have more than two frames, that means that the user can slide left and of course right at the same time. When we put the animation type or the transition type to the push, then we can define that the transition should happen from right side or to left side. When the user drag the item to the left, then the new frame will slide in from left side of the screen or the other way around. If you want to have control on the dragging direction or sliding direction, set the animation type on the push and then define the direction that the sliding is going to happen. The next point is that we have one item here in inside the prototyping panel, when we set the animation type on the push, then we have this checkbox which says animate matching layers. I check on the animate matching layers. That means if we have layers with the same name in two different frames that we are making this uh, interaction between them, this interaction will behave them like an auto animation. But for the rest of the layers that do not have the same name, then the animation type is going to be pushed. Those kind of elements are going to be pushed inside the screen. I do 
do the same process for the next frame. So I select the slider and then connect it to the first frame and then set the same setting. And as you can see, when we slide to the right or left, the text and the background is going to kind of slide in and out of the frame but the image itself or the pack shot itself is going to kind of have auto animation or it's going to kind of a fade out and fading and this is just happening because we have the same name for the pack shot layer in both frames if i simply change the name of the pack shot in all the frames then we will see that the pack shot is going to be pushed in as well and then finally we have the sliding effect and you can see it's working pretty well we can go one step further and set the same transition and interaction for the pack shot image as well which means we need to connect the pack shot in each frame to the next frame and then set the same interaction setting for it. Then whenever the user uh, kind of swap left and right on the pack shot itself, we will have the same sliding effect. And that was it for this video. I'm going to publish this file inside the uh, Figma community that you can have access to it and kind of do the practice on the real file. And you can find the link inside the description. And at the end, again, I get sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave a comment for me. Let's learn together and see you in the next video. Bye.